in 2001, I think Americans thought we got to make sure that extremist terrorism does not attack our shores again. But I don't think in our wildest imagination, most Americans could imagine or want what has come to pass. My work is my, my apology as an American for these wars. My name is Peter Van Ochtmal, and the name of the book is Sorry for the War. I really started photographing war in, in 2006 when I first went to Iraq. The depth of the cost of these conflicts is far more than we're generally exposed to. We hardly knew a, a face or a name of those that we were at war with and, and, and kind of within. It became really important to me to focus on, on the other side of these conflicts the true victims of these wars, which, which are the Iraqis and Afghans caught in the middle. Whenever I'm photographing, I really try and relate the pictures back to frames of reference that everyday people can have as much as possible. When I heard about, well before going to Mosul, that, that the university had been largely destroyed, there was something about a burned classroom that looks like a classroom in a high school or a college in the U.S., rendered unrecognizable by the, the burn marks, the scorch marks all over the walls and the empty desk. I thought these are pictures that could kind of bridge a gap. Seemingly boring scenes have always interested me, be it a mahogany kind of paneled room in the U.S. Senate where the Senate Armed Forces Committee was deliberating the budget for the U.S. military, or places like a hotel conference room where a small organization of female veterans were holding a pageant, and a pageant that was part beauty pageant, part opportunity to kind of air the traumas of one's experiences. It's also important to continue marking sacrifices made by Americans and what they what they left behind. There are some photographs in the book of Jenny Taylor, who's the widow of Brent Taylor, who was killed in Afghanistan. She had gone with her sister to look for gravestones for her husband. This sort of like banal act, measuring to see if the gravestone will fit on the plot, was also so deeply emotional at the same time. The book is a mixture of my photographs and images I've kind of appropriated from, from the screen. And at some point, every president has kind of announced the end of the war. I wanted to revisit those speeches and pluck out through closed captioning critical lines that were both kind of foolish seeming now, but also open-ended. If the book had come out in a few months, I'd have a new president marking the end of war. But of course, the end of the war for us means very little. The end of the war for us isn't the end of the war for the Afghans. It's not the end of the war for the Iraqis. Maybe it's the end of the beginning. But what will come to pass, we'll hardly know a thing about.